<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I was dancing, looking at the comments. You caught me out on that one. Good afternoon. My name is Tony Darrick and welcome to the How To Craft Network studio. Show two of our Create Together Club. Fantastic, fantastic club where you can join at any point or just take the inspiration and use the products that you have in your stash or dig out the ones that you've bought already. My name is Tony Darrick. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. We are a fabulous channel that uh, endeavours to go live most days, giving you content for all of the products that you buy from me and my lovely companies and sister companies, but also to get longevity out of all of the products that you may have in your stash from any brand. We love to share the love of craft. That's all that matters to us. So if you're joining in for the first time, click that subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want to be notified every time that we are live, there's a little bell as well, and that will give you a rattle when um, we do go live. Just giving you that little nudge to say, hey, Stamps By Me are about to go live. So I am a bit giddy. I don't know why. Some days I have these days. So let's just talk you through very quickly what the club entails. So the club is three A5 stamps, and they come in three envelopes. So we've already done stamp one and we're working on stamp two. So if you join now, you will get all three sent. One will be sealed because we start that in a few months, okay? So all of the inspiration for the stamp one is on YouTube, okay? It's already there. You can catch it at any point. We started this one yesterday and we're on to more content today. And then I'll tell you when to open the third. It's affordable and it's a great way to interact with other crafters as well and just share and enjoy craft. That is what it's all about. Now, there are several ways that you can shop with us here at the How To Craft Network or Stamps By Me, whichever you want to call us. Um, live whilst we are live now in the studio, we are live on the website, so you can shop live underneath the show. You can also click that fabulous QR code if you, if you are on any other social media platforms that will take you to the products in the show. And if you're watching on Catch Up, again, scan that QR code. <coughs> and it'll take you to all the products that I've used in show. Very, very easy. Uh, we try and make everything super easy for you to be able to shop the shows, come and enjoy the shows, and also get all of the inspiration from all the shows that you may have missed as well. I just wanted to tell you, we do have our fabulous how-to guide section as well. So if you're looking for some inspiration on any of our stamps or products, and you prefer to have step-by-step -step guides, we have Karen on our design team, who does lots and lots of inspirational content with step-by-step -step photos and guides. And you can go and check those out at any point as well. So not only do we have the QR code, you have that feature too. So make the most of it. It is there for you. Um, and Karen puts a lot of content out there. Obviously, she loves the love of craft as much as me as well. So that's the collection. Now, you can shop this if you wish to join at any point and play catch up, or you can wait till the third stamp has been so you can see that one as well and then buy them all together if you want to. All you need to do is either on the website, look below where I'm talking, or you can pop create together in the search engine as well. There's lots of ways to shop our products. So let's do a little bit of a shout out. Hi, Paul, Brian, Sue, Marilyn, Helen, Melanie, Oh, I haven't seen that name for a while. Melanie Asinda Smith, I hope you're well, sweetheart. Elizabeth, Marilyn Squire, got co connection today. Brilliant, that's brilliant. Jane, oh, Jane's found the stamp, finally. Um, getting back home. Jan's looking forward to getting back home. Oh, she hasn't had a magazine. I think you just left just before it landed, didn't you, sweetheart? Um, yeah, just left 10 minutes after. Oh, um, and let's have a look. Thank you, Tony and design team. You're very welcome. Love Karen's how-to guides. Me too. They're super, super cool. We've got lots more new stuff coming your way as well um, from some other members of our design team. Now, you all know that Paul has just um, been doing some videos for you all. Um, you'll be able to catch that soon. He'll get that loaded on. Just bear in mind, these people do have full-time jobs. And although they you know, strive to give you as much as they can, it's not possible to do it every day. Um, they still have to earn a living, we still have to pay our household bills, but absolutely we're going to try and put those feels out and give you as much back as we possibly, possibly can. So hi Carolyn and hi Marilyn. So shall we crack straight on? So yesterday when I was live, what did you all say to me? Oh, can you do some watercolouring? Well, you asked, so you're going to get a bit different today though. So the stamp, the, the card we made yesterday is there. 
over the course of the seven days, I'll line them all up on here and then we can decide which one we liked the most. And then if you are crafting along too, you can absolutely post them on our Eureka fan page all together or as individuals um, and let me know how you get on. And if you do make your own card that's not inspired by me in any way, shape or form, you can post that too and then hopefully it'll inspire the rest of the crafters in the group. I ordered the first set of ink pads this morning on CNC. Helen, <gasps> you are so naughty. So updates before I get into demo then tonight at eight o'clock Emma is live on the Thirsty Brush Facebook page. Go and check it out. She's reconfigured 2023 in her own little precious way. So go and check out what Emma's got to show you. She's got some new things in there that she's never done before as well. So that's eight o'clock tonight. I think she might have a giveaway and then she's live on Saturday. And I am live on Create and Craft on Thursday. So if you missed my product preview last night at seven o'clock, go check it out. Some new ink pads, as Helen's told you. And um, the shows are on Thursday over on Create and Craft as a one day special at 6 p.m. So if you want to shop the show now, you can scan the QR code, which is visual, right there in front of you and use the code SHOP3. OK, SHOP3. It'll show you all of those lovely products. So let's crack on. Cup of tea, coffee, as always. Yesterday I had two and they both went cold. I know lots of you are waiting for Emma's live tonight. I'm super excited. I'll be watching too, so we'll have some comments. We'll pull a leg about a few bits and pieces too. I don't think she's on, so it's all right. We'll get away with it. So I'm going to use the bunny stamp, of course, and we're going to do some watercolouring. Now, I try, as always, not to use products that I the fear you may not have in your stash. I do have my masking fluid though, because I'd like to create a snowy scene on this one or starry scene. But if you don't have masking fluid, don't worry if you've got white paint, gouache, confetti ink or anything, I'll show you ways to get around not having this. Equally, if you do want this, this is on our website. It's our fantastic masking fluid that we use to mask off our bunnies if we wanted to and mask off the snow if we wanted to. And it's a glue that's just temporarily so you can put the watercolour around and then scratch away the um, glue. It's like a scratchy sort of glue. And then it will reveal a beautiful image underneath, which is untouched from the watercolour. So I think a lot of you bought that when we launched that one. So shall we crack straight on? Right, today... So I'm going to be using this like mount, mount board here. So watercolour card, mount board. If you're using everyday card, you're probably going to get a different look. It doesn't mean it's going to be worse or better. It just means that if you just use everyday card, it's going to drink the water quicker and make it a little bit harder for you. But if that's all you have in your stash, just use that. You don't have to go out and buy specialist card or paper. But if you do have watercolour card or this um, lovely Imala board, then you're good to go. So let's go here. So I'm going to first of all stamp the bunny in the corner. Now I'm going to go with the same bunnies as yesterday but don't worry we will use all of them. So just off in the corner here. I'm going to stamp it in our new black ink because it works for everything. Never used masking fluid. Helen, where have you been? Just move these for you. I don't know what's happening to me there, but I'm only on half a screen. Let's um, stamp these lovely bunnies out. Really, really pretty, these. Really, really pretty. All year round cards. Let's just turn this heater off. I'll just stamp these out on this, off the board here. Nor me, Helen. There's a few of you, well, might pick up something new today. So there we go. How cute are those? Let's get rid of that for now. So I'm just going to, just before we touch it or do anything with, let's just blast it off with my gun, make sure it's absolutely dry. Happy New Year, Tony. Thank you, Ronald. That's super kind. So what I'm going to do now, 
this is a, we've, I'm going to create a masterpiece more than a card. It can be mounted onto a card, should you wish, but more of a masterpiece. So let's just put that under there. So you're going to need some tape just to mask it off, okay? So I'm just using this one. I think this must be Funky Fossils. So I'm just going to cut some tape. And I'm just going to create myself like a lovely border. So I'm just going to pop it into the centre of my glass mat here, roughly where I want it to be. So maybe a little bit higher. Great. I love grids. And then I'm just going to pop the tape down here. Now, if you like to measure a mask, then you can absolutely do that. I'm not too precious about it, but I do want a nice border. So I'll just pop that down there. Now, the cool thing about these sort of things is you can put a border all the way around. Lindsay says she used masking fluid 30 years ago. <laughs> so I could create a border top bottom if I wanted to, halfway down, side, top side or just two sides. I think we'll do like a window, but it is totally your call. And then I think we'll do one down the side too. Hope this doesn't tear my project. Somebody's in trouble if it does. Funky Fossil, where are you? <laughs> there we go. So we've got a beautiful sort of aperture window in there. So this is where the masking fluid comes in. So I'm going to create like a snowy background, although it doesn't have to be. It can be a Northern Lights background, whatever you want. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze. Hopefully this isn't what. There we go. It is blocked. And I'm going to do like, you could do some sort of stars if you wanted to, but I think I'm just going to go snowy. So. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And I do like to sort of make big blobs of snow, small, tiny. And this is just going to protect what's underneath. So when I do my overlay of watercolour, um, I'll just rub these away. Um, <clears throat> now, if you don't have masking fluid, don't worry about it. You can add these types of spots with gouache, if that makes sense. I don't want to do too many, but enough. Because we're doing some freehand painting today, if anyone is thinking, oh my goodness me. <laughs> I don't want them to be perfectly circles either. I want I do want them. I'm not going to mask the bodies off. I'm confident I won't get all of the colour in there. <clears throat> so I'm just going to dry this up, put, give it a little bit of a nudge. It does dry quite quick, but not quick enough for what I need it to. So give it a little bit of a nudge. Maureen always puts it on her jeans first. Yeah, me too, normally. So whilst those are just pushing on themselves, I wanted to show you a little bit of a technique which is quite cool to make your rabbits look white. Excuse me. So if you're wanting a white rabbit, so yesterday we did pink rabbits. I mean, you don't get pink rabbits. It's good to experiment. So I want to do like some white rabbits today. And I always find the best way to get white or make a daisy look white or anything look white is use a really, really pale grey, a pale blue, um, a pale purple, something with a really sort of soft undertone. 
but not everywhere. So you're just adding an accent, like if it was a daisy, you'd just go from the centre out and it would make the rest of it look white. So I'm going to try and achieve that with these bunnies, like make them look, <clears throat> excuse me, like they're white and fluffy rather than a brown or a grey. So I have like this like bluey coloured ink pad here, just a very pale, pale blue, it's the eyes ink one. And I'm just going to water it right, right back, okay? Add lots of water. So I've just got a touch of this blue here. And this is what's going to make our bunnies look quite white. Can't really see that blue on there, but it's definitely there. So on this one, I'm using a, a Stamps by Me size 6. So if you have the brushes. Um, so all I'm going to do, just spot some of the colour in some of the areas, like on the tummy. And this is what's going to make your rabbits look white. So not everywhere. I'll show you when I hold it up at the end. It's because I'm trying to do the white look, but it's not showing great on um, your screens, unfortunately. So I'm not doing it everywhere. <clears throat> the colour is such that it's just adding a little bit of colour and that wonderful ink that I've stamped in, which is our new ink, is not going to bleed or anything like that. It's so good. So just pick up some of the colour. So not everywhere. And then when we come to do our background, it'll totally make our bunnies look whiter than they are. And we might add some sparkle today to the tails and things. But today's technique is more about, <coughs> excuse me, is more about um, the watercolour, getting some nice backgrounds as well. Hoping you can see that. You can just see it. If I go any darker, then it looks like I'm trying to make my bunnies blue. So you just add a halo of pink, sorry, pink, blue, grey. <clears throat> you can get away with purple too. Okay. So I'm not going to, all of this is going to be left completely white outside of my uh, banner. Just using all the ink up now on my mat because I'm tight. <laughs> there we go so let's just dry that off <clears throat> looks incredible it's like a sketchy sort of design as well push on those um, glue that glue as well Yeah, my glue's dry too, which is cool. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a bigger brush. So one that's going to carry a bit more water. Get rid of that one. You've all gone quiet. That means you're all watching intensely. So before you wet your card, think about what colours you're going to use. So I've got the new Tiffany, which is in TV tomorrow. I have some magenta. So I'm going for a northern light C type styly look tonight and I could go a lime green if you wanted to dark blue whatever you want whatever you want so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my all too busy watching so just take some water and I'm just going to add some water to the background okay so I'm not going to go too close to my bunnies now <clears throat> if you have masking fluid you can mask your bunnies off as well I'm okay with not masking because I'm confident I won't get too close to the bunnies. And if I do, I'm not too precious about it. So I'm just wetting. So you'll be able to hold yours up to the light to see where it's wet and where it's not. 
I'm just leaning back slightly. I'm filling all of the area. Just in around my, on his ears. I'll paint in between his ears. Don't risk that one. And then round his head. And I'll paint those spaces in. So I've got the wet, it's drying quicker than I can get the water on. And then all I'm going to do then is I'm going to take an ink pad, swipe it. Be careful with these ink pads, a little goes a long way. Okay, and then I'm just going to drop some of this ink into the water. Just random. Now you can see the resist from that lovely um, masking fluid. So I'm just going to drop some colour in randomly. Now if you want to do the Northern Lights effect where it comes down like that, you can absolutely do that. All you need to, in fact, I'll, I'll do it. I'll show you. So I'm just going to clean So as you can see, I'm pouncing, pounce, pounce, pounce. I'll clean my brush and then let's get some of this lovely magenta. So when I'm doing sort of a Northern Lightsy sort of type style thing, I always try and layer my colour first, the colours that I want to come shining through. Try not to bleed them together too much. You will end up with a nice purple in this case, but um, you know, just put it down and let the water do the work. Could always do a third color if you wanted to as well. So I'll try not to be too careful with where the colour goes. Just get it down, really. Clean your brush when you change the colour. I'm happy with that. I've got a bit of decent colour laid down there. can intensify it because it always dries back two shades lighter, remember. So get the colour on. Don't waste your colour. So I think that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it back a little bit, not a lot. Just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some black on top. And this is where you're going to get your northern lights look. So you lay your initial two colours down. And then I've just got black from my watercolour pad here. You could use an ink pad for this. Just mix it up. And then drop some black in as well. Just random. Gonna give you a bit of a starry night feel. Just ra random, just pop it in. No rules. It's a bit. Of, it's a bit of card. It's a bit of color. You know, just pop the color in. You could use a black ink pad if you have one to hand. I don't have a water-based one to hand, but yes, you could absolutely do that. So you can see it's all pretty much quickly coming together. Now, a cool technique is once you've got the colour down like that, if you take your brush, pop it in the water, take out all of the water out of your brush. So now it's called a thirsty brush. To get that sort of northern light look, if you tilt your brush on an angle on its side like so, and if you swipe it in, it will drink the colour back up. Can you see how I've got that line there? I'll show you again. I'll pop it in and it will drink the ink 
back up. So if you put something down and you're thinking, do you know what? I'm not too sure about that. So you can see how you're getting these lines. So just on its side, don't worry, you can put the colour back in if you end up with an ugly line and you don't like it. Okay. And you start to pull that colour back out. Can you see how it's pulling that teal out there? So you end up with the, the line that comes down. So just manipulate it, play around with it, swipe it. If you're happy with it, leave it. But you can see here how you get that line. So you need to obviously let this dry back. I would probably add way more black to this, and that's what I'm going to do. So more black for me. Now, when I put it down, as you can see, the card's starting to dry now. I'm just going to wet my brush. Manipulate it around a little bit more. I really do like the intense black because it makes the rest of it absolutely pop. So, but it's totally preference. Get a bit of black around here, maybe. Now you could, if you can't do the swiping where you drag the colour out, you can paint it in with gouache. I just love messing with it. I love how watercolour just takes care of itself. Now, if you think, oh, I've lost all of my colour. Oh, add it back in. It will good. It's just a tiny bit of black down this side, just a little bit. There we go. So let's just dry this one off. Let me just tidy up around my bunnies a little bit with the colour, make it neater. Just taking some of that colour and bringing it round. up the colour that's actually on the page because um I could actually use this colour tool and stick to the colour that um is round that area. So we're just tidying it up a little bit. Let me just fill in these spaces here. Now, if you've masked it off, you wouldn't have a bother. You could just swipe all over it all. Um, but I haven't masked, so... Because I like to do everything live on air. Right, let's get this dried off. I'm, I'm happy with that now. It looks absolutely gorgeous in and around my bunnies. Bit of texture, bit of colour. There we go. So don't faff around with it too much. Maybe do it once and then have a play with colour, see what you think. Um, and then maybe swap it up for some oranges and some lime greens. That would look cool. So this needs to be dry, and then we're going to do a bit of freehand. So we're going to create a scene around our bunnies. So if you're wondering if it's dry, just tilt back to see if the shine. I'm hoping this tape's good and my watercolour doesn't leak underneath. <laughs> I think we're good there. So, freehand. You all wanted to do a bit of watercolouring, right? So it's brilliant to always incorporate maybe some freehand in with stamping because then you can say it's like, it is really, really handmade, isn't it? So I always like to go with a sort of medium brush and the one that I like of my own is a 10. But if you have a 4, that's absolutely fine too. So finer detail, smaller, it's totally up to you. So let's just grab this one. Let's see what this one is. Whoops, the daisy. This one is six. 
okay so let me show you let's create some like silhouette design around our lovely bunnies here so let's take some of the black always take your paintbrush out of your water sit it on top like so so you don't ruin your brushes okay so let's get some of this black here so now i'm gonna freehand and it's so so easy let me just show you on a piece of card. i've done this lots and lots of times for you all at home so the way that we do sort of silhouettes is we have a bit of card here. So our paintbrush has a tip, a belly. So I, it's tip. Let me just get rid of this water. So tip or toe. Are we ready? Toe, belly, toe. And we get a leaf. We see that there? See that there? So toe, belly, toe. Again, so a line, toe, belly. Super, super easy. Line, toe. So then you end up starting to create branches and things like that. Can we see there? So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create our lovely little sort of silhouette scene around. Now, you don't have to operate it overkill. You could just put a pot of Pop a few if you wanted to. So take out the excess water out of your brush, pop it onto a tissue, let the tissue drink the water out of your brush, and then let's have a think about this. So let's do a nice single line out here, and then I'm going to go toe, belly. See that here? <clears throat> and I'm going to go again up here. That's going to have a lot of white in that. Look at all the, When I pull that back, that's going to disappear, that one, because of all those um, masking, but it's okay. And then I'm just going to go here. If they fade into nothing, you just go back over them, okay? So let's do one from here. We can always bring that detail back with um, a white gel pen. So let's do one from here. So toe, belly, toe. It's the best way I can describe it. So toe, belly, toe. You may have to go over them again. Where next, where next? Let's just pop something up here. See that there? So let's just dry those off. And then they'll pretty much disappear. And then I'll just quit, I'll go over them once again. Let's bring them back just a little bit more. So try and get quite a bit of pigment on your brush. So toe, belly, toe. And if you don't quite line it up on the second sort of stretch, don't worry about it because it looks like you've got a silhouette behind it. I'm just quickly going back over them, making them a little bit darker. Make sure you get a nice point on them. Just finishes it. Connect them with a line, obviously. So you always, I always find brushing away from me easier. So toe, belly, toe. Okay. 
nasty and doing it with puddles, you've got too much water in your brush. Take the excess water out. Right, so let's dry this off. Super easy, isn't it? It is super easy. Toe, belly, toe, toe, belly, toe. Line, toe, belly, toe. Line, toe, belly, toe. Super easy. So dry this off and then I'm just going to take my um, gold confetti and I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of water. Now, I don't want the splats on my bunnies. Now, if you'd have masked off, you won't have the problem I've got right now. But I'm just going to take a piece of paper. Just cover my bunnies up a little bit, look. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to add the splats with the gold as well. And again, these pretty much disappear to nothing. So, just make sure we've got like so. I'll just dry this one off. Come on, Dorothy, you can do this. Bring it back a little bit more. You can do this or you can leave it out. If you take a white gel pen and you can add like a, a highlight to the leaf. We see here. You don't have to do this, ladies and gents, but it is up to you. So you can leave it just as a silhouette. I never complete the leaf when I'm adding the detail. So this will dry back as well. Don't be thinking, oh, look at that. Now you've got a harsh white line. It looks awful. So. You can totally skip this if you just want the silhouette. Like so, let me just dry that. Now, what we need to do is add some sparkle. In fact, let's unpeel it first. So hopefully it doesn't tear. has gone under a little bit but okay so far let's just see so if you have your eraser stops by me eraser you can erase this part away I think I've got my mind's in my craft bag for TV. Why it's in there? Because it's not like I ever use anything like that on TV. <clears throat> and there we have. And then just get these sparkles here. And I'm just going to sparkle, hopefully, it says. Both bunny's tails. Oh, no, let's do the bellies.
mean, I love stickles glue, but it's not great. The nozzle, the glitter, oh, so frustrating. Get all the glue and the glitter just clogs. Anybody else have that problem where all the glitter sticks in bottle rather than comes out of blooming nozzle? You just get a bucket of glue. So annoying. Seeing if I've got another one, just one second. I have, but it isn't the right colour. Anyway, just one second. I'll just try one more time because it will finish my project. Oh, so good, great question that, Lindsay, actually. Why do you do the initial snowflakes with masking fluid rather than go ash splats after? Because the masking fluid shows the true colour of the card underneath. Does that make sense? So if I did it in white, yeah, it'd be amazing. I'd have white splats on there. But the, the, the great thing about the masking fluid is you get the natural colour card come back through. So this is like a creamy tone. If you look on the back, it's white, pure, pure white. Uh, there we go, look. So when I remove these blobs here in a second, you're going to see this cream come back through um, the, the original card. So it really does look like a hand-painted... Oh, oh, I think I've done it. No, I'm just getting a load of glue. That's just pants. <laughs> I'm going to put on what I can get out anyway. I'm just going to do the belly of the mum or the dad and then the little one on the right. A bit of sparkles coming through, but not as much as I'd like. Let's see if we can show you that. Captain. There is a little bit of sparkle there. So all I'm going to do now is give this a rub. You see now? How I get the original come through. So you can do this with your electric eraser if your hands are not great. See it all come off. Look. Make sure it's absolutely dry though, because if you start doing this, um, do some of your work if it's not dry. And then what I'm going to do now is take this. Stamp's too big. What stamps did we have on our first one? Oh, I've got thank you. One second, ladies and gents. Let me just grab that. Here we go. Oh, not on my cat. All mine. Let's try. Oh, that's good, isn't it? All mine. Let's see if this one will fit. If not, you've got your washi tapes, haven't you? You've all got your washi tapes. See if this one fits. Yep, I'm going to go for it. You could obviously pick your sentiment at home. And then... Just to show you how it would look if you popped it on a card. There we go. What do we think? I will mount it onto a card for the back. And I will fill in those spaces on that stamp set. You could actually now go in, if your glitter glue works, add the glitter as well into those recesses. So you've got sparkles in those lovely... Um, big splodges of snowflakes and some little ones. In fact, it does look quite good with lots on there. You could as well 
if you wanted to, not operation overkill. But if you wanted to, if you don't want to hand paint, that's absolutely fine. Use a silhouette stamp from your stash. But if you wanted to, you could use your fine liner pen and frame this to the rabbit. Frame with a pen, pen in a straight line all the way around just to give it that edge if you wanted to. So there we go. Card number two, demo number two. Who's going to give this one a try? Let me know after I've gone off air underneath this video who's going to give this one a try. And no, don't be scared of it. It's, you saw how it was a hot mess to start with. You've got to get that colour down and you've got to have the confidence to see that card through to the very end. How do you know what it's going to look like if you don't play around with it and see it through? See the card through. And if you're making one, make three. So mask three down. Do one in one pinks, purples, teals and greens, lime greens and yellows. See which one's out the best. Why not? Have fun with it. So I'm, I will get this mounted onto the card and I'll pop it on the back. And that's day two of our lovely Create Together Club. Now, please remember, tonight, 8 o'clock, Emma's live on Facebook. I'm live with you over on Create and Craft tomorrow at 6 p.m. And then Emma's live on Saturday as well. So stay tuned for all of those things. Don't forget to um, subscribe to our newsletter. That's where you get all of the daily updates, daily savings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So stay tuned because there's going to be lots more to come. Whatever you're doing, have a lovely afternoon, stroke evening. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought, and I will see you all later. Take care, everyone. Bye.